Hello and welcome back again guys. I'm here with another Drosera Pygmy All Green Form video. And I just wanted to show you guys something really quickly. Now if you take a look at this snap tentacle right here, if I can get it to focus, this snap tentacle right here, you see that there is a tiny little green speck uh, attached to it. That is actually some sort of insect. My guess is it's a kind of fungal gnat. Um, the reason why I wanted to show you guys this really quickly is that I woke up this morning and I found it attached itself already right here. Um, I didn't feed the plant. In fact, I, I don't have these kinds of small bugs to feed my plant with. So it's really interesting that, um, you know, one can wake up to find uh, a insect stuck naturally like that on the leaf. And the reason why this is also interesting to me is because um, in... who was it? In uh, Siggy's uh, videos, he said that while some forms of Drosera uh, exhibit um, uh, snap tentacles or marginal tentacles, these marginal tentacles tend not to have any uh, mucilage. They do not produce glue. Well, then if that's the case, how come this little guy here is stuck? I, I, I don't know whether he's still alive or not, but well, when I woke up this morning, I saw him, he was still struggling. And if this, a, uh, if this tentacle doesn't produce any mucilage, how on earth did he get stuck and got held down so tight there? I mean, that guy was struggling. He wasn't just like dead and landed there. Um, let's see if we can get a closer look. And hopefully if I can pro poke and prod him a little bit, maybe he'll respond. There, there. He's, he's still alive. So, obviously, there's something more to these snap tentacles that we do not yet understand. While, yes, it's true, uh, the, the uh, Drosera Pygmaea or the Pygmy Drosera family, sorry. The Pygmy Drosera family uh, does not produce glue on their marginal tentacles, but it could be that there there is something else there. There is something else there, look. Oh, wait. Did he just move? Or did I just dislodge him? Yeah, I could have. So, anyway, the second point of uh, showing you guys this video is that this could offer a possible clue as to what kind of prey Drosera pygmaea uh, tends to catch in the wild and it also offers us a clue as to how they develop these uh, uh, marginal hairs or snap tentacles as a means of carnivory. Let's see if this guy is still stuck here. It'll be interesting if he got caught on another on another snap tentacle which yet again does not produce mucilage I'm afraid if I get any closer I may I may uh, hit the pot or we'll still lose my balance but anyway so yeah now this little guy here seems to be caught Maybe by the uh, mucilage producing hairs this time. Well, oh, look at this. Remember this snap tentacle that was previously caught on? It seemed to have moved up a little bit. Like, moved up in the direction that I was showing you guys yesterday on how, on how these uh, tentacles tend to spring up like that. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. What I think happened is maybe this little guy stepped on one of the touchpads of the tentacles and the tentacle lifted itself just enough with just the right amount of speed like I showed you guys in the previous video so that it just 
so barely touches one of these glue producing hairs around the around the lamina and that is how the Drosera pygmaea uses snap tentacles to capture its prey at least in my theory that's how it works okay so I think we're done with the video uh, let me just get try and get another uh, snap tentacle to work as a bonus once again it'll be really cool if I can get it down the first time not sure if that one triggered as you can see there's this little gap here where the uh, where the insect has already been fixed to the leaf so this little gap right here could indicate that the bug itself has already triggered the hair. Well anyway, there are some hairs here that we can play with. Let's see if they give us any response. There we go. Not too inconsistent after all. So that one just well for the lack of the better word, snap moved slowly upwards like that. When I say slowly, I'm actually comparing it to Drosera glandulicera. But when you compare it to Drosera bermanii, then these hairs move much, much quicker. Let's see if I can get another one to repeat itself. Not sure if that one just did. Tends to get a little bit difficult to spot whether the hairs are actually moving or not when the plants are so incredibly tiny and I don't have a macro lens. My camera is on wide angle. And there we go, that's another one. That one moved with quite an impressive speed. I think I must feed the plant soon or else you know constant poking and prodding will exhaust its energy. And there we go, there's another one. Alright, I think I'm going to stop poking at my plants <laughs> lest they go join a union or something. A piggy union, yay! <laughs> Well, anyway, so as you can see, that little bug right there has already been uh, moved, I think, by the, the, the normal mucilage producing hairs on the lamina to fix itself deeper and deeper into the cup of the leaf. And whether, whether the bug actually triggered any of the trigger hairs, I mean the snap tentacles, uh, has yet to be observed, but the purpose of the video was to show you that in the wild, where conditions are probably more favorable than my artificial setup, uh, this could be, uh, I mean these snap tentacles could be more useful to catching small prey that are maybe crawling on the moss, sometimes just barely buried bit uh, underneath the substrate yeah could be so that these marginal tentacles also present a form of subterranean trapping mechanism I'm sorry guys I just cannot get enough of these plants as you can see one of the snap tentacles just move up. Okay, I'm going to upload this and see if we can get any... Okay, there goes another one. Well, I must be doing something right today. The, the uh, snap tentacles seem to be responding a lot more frequently and consistently this time. Hold on, let's do a temperature reading. Where is it? There we go. 
Let's see. 30 degrees to 31. My, my. It could be a temperature-related thing. Well, that would be interesting. Considering that these plants uh, grow naturally in New Zealand, where I, I doubt even the summer temperatures reach this height, reach 30 degrees. So it almost doesn't make sense for these plants to grow, I mean, to perform better in a temperature that they don't usually get to experience in the wild. Why would they perform optimally uh, in, in, in an environment that is suboptimal for their growth? Very interesting. With that, I'll leave you guys some food for thought to ponder upon. To ponder upon. Okay. <laughs> that was catchy. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.